international wine correspondent, lecturer, educator, and today Australia's most authoritative wine writer. Mr. Hook will introduce two, uh, two keynote speakers to speak the topic Australia's industrial wines image, justified or false. Mr. Hook will moderate the discussion. Mr. Hugh and Hook, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Rob. Um, and good afternoon. Feels like I feel like saying good evening, but it's good afternoon, isn't it? I have to keep reminding myself. It always feels like the evening here at these functions. Um, and welcome to Whit Mitchell Taylor of, Mitch of Taylor's Wines, Bruce Tyrrell of Tyrrell's Wines. Two um, esteemed, highly regarded, and well-known gentlemen from the wine industry who just, for convenience' sake, still the companies still have the same names that they have, which is. Uh, yeah, something that could be linked to what we're going to be talking about, which is, does Australia produce industrial wine? And I think the, uh, this topic, uh, I'm not going to say very much, these guys are going to do all the talking, but the topic came out of, I think, um, last year particularly, there was a lot of negative discussion about Australian wine in the international press, especially coming out of the UK. Um, and quite a few of these comments revolved around the premise that Australia produces boring sameish wines and quite often industrial wines. Here we go. Francis Robinson writing in the Financial Times. Among a certain school of commentators, Australia is associated erroneously, she has in brackets, exclusively with fabricated industrial wine, etc. And Andrew Jefford in the speech that he gave late last year which was an extraordinary paper and I'd urge you to, to read it on the internet um, if you're interested. He, uh, he, he gave it a marvellous uh, comprehensive paper, a very, very long paper, um, which uh, addressed the issues of what Australia can do about its flagging international reputation and why is it uh, like this. And uh, I did have a quote from him somewhere here, but he did point out, of course, that... Um, uh, the flagging popularity possibly of Australian wine overseas is, could be due to a few things. Boredom for a start. Australia has done so well for so long. Um, and in 15 years it's risen from an export wine value of about $260 million to about $2,700 million, which is a more than tenfold increase. And he made the very good point that um, we've done so well for so long that you couldn't really expect to maintain that indefinitely and especially maintain uh, the image of desirability that went with it for much of that time. So, without further ado, firstly, um, I think I'll throw this to you first, Mitchell. Can you define industrial wine? Well, industrial wine, I think, is really a term that, that, that is just thrown out there when they, when they look at the way wine is made through a production method. And, and really, when you look at um, the perception of wine globally, uh, a lot of times the marketing and the romance is boutique, the smaller the better the wine is. But really where, where, where Australia made such an impact from the mid-80s was with our um, innovation and the way we were able to cut through and really bring the best of regions avail available to us and really use the latest technology. So I always say that's a very positive thing about the Australian wine industry, to sort of be seen leaders in this field and also to represent the best value wine um, out there in a lot of the global markets that we operate. But then having that success early on, what has happened is that it really means we're a bit of a target. So a lot of the, the more traditional countries that have centuries of tradition, a lot of inefficient co-ops that make wine and I think everyone in this room has probably had the, um, um, the travel experience when you're travelling through Europe and you just want something that is of value at that entry level and you really don't get it at that stage. So I think a lot of the um, um, criticism has been put on us to say that all Australian wine is made in that efficient um, technological manner where there, there's certain, it's a step process and there, there's plenty of, of very, um, 
very succinct winemaking that, that really um, mimics and also um, builds on the, the great terroir and um, the area. So I think the, the term of what industrial winemaking really is is talking about um, volume and efficiencies but a lot of that has had positives at the very entry level. Well, yeah, okay. I, I would add something to that. I would say that when commentators are using that word, they're probably also uh, having in mind manipulation of wine. For example, adding acid, adding sugar if we add sugar, adding tannin, uh, using a lot of oak, um, uh, using filtration, fining, and various other treatments, um, perhaps to excess, and shaping the wine in the image that the winemaker has for it, rather than letting the terroir or nature uh, shape the wine itself. Um, we can come back to this theme later on, I'm sure, because I think it's something that people are calling for more and more overseas, what they call more natural wines. But um, perhaps we should come back to the word industrial and think that uh, in Australia we have, as long as I can remember and even longer than I've been around, referred to the wine business as the wine industry. Uh, there are no other countries in the world, apart from perhaps New Zealand, uh, that I can think of that call the wine sector, we call the agricultural sector the agricultural sector, we don't call it the industry.